Hey, what's going on, Gorilla Fam? Dom here, as always, with Gorilla Grills. And we got a special week for you. It is Independence Week, 4th of July week, whatever you want to call it. We are leading up to Independence Day here on Saturday. Right now, it's Monday, and I promised you guys last Friday that all week long, we're going to be having some awesome recipes for you, all about going back to the American heritage. These are all going to be 100% American-style recipes. Now, first one this week, I thought we would kick it way old school. You know, what's that one thing that every time something bad happens, every time you want to help out the neighbor, what do you bring them? Well, generally, people in America bring over a casserole over to the neighbors. And what is the number one casserole in America? Well, that would be the chicken pot pie, my friends. Now, we have a fantastic recipe here, and the reason it's fantastic is because it is so dang simple. I like to call this my thirds recipe for chicken pot pie because pretty much everything in here is going to be about a third of a cup. So all your vegetables, you're looking for about a third of a cup. All of your soup, your, uh, your, your uh, either cream of mushroom or cream of chicken, you're using about a third of a cup of that as well. Butter, a third of a cup there. So when it comes to pretty much everything in this, you're going to be using a third of a cup for all of your ingredients. Now, to get us started, I've got our chicken rocking behind us. It's been going for about an hour, hour and a half at around 220. Uh, it's not exactly finished just yet, but we are going to uh, take that chicken, cut it up and get it inside our mix. Now, to make the innards of that chicken pot pie, we got to start off with our vegetables, of course. Now, carrots, potatoes, celery, peas, and corn. Those are going to be your five ingredients there that are going to make up the base of this pie. I like to add a little bit of onion in there as well. That's up to you, though. Um, and garlic is another good thing to add in there if you want a little extra good taste. But uh, one thing to remember, when you're going into this, your potatoes and your carrots are going to cook a lot slower than everything else you're putting into this mix. So pre-cook your carrots, pre-cook your potatoes, just a little bit to get those things going nice and soft before you mix them with everything else. Nobody wants to have, you know, perfect texture on everything, and then all of a sudden you bite into a raw potato halfway through. So nobody wants to see that. Soften those uh, potatoes, carrots up a little bit before you add them to your mix. And like I said, about a third of a cup on every single one of our vegetables here. All right, well, let's start off here. I'm just gonna slice up. I'm making small slices, about, uh, oh, I'd say a quarter of an inch thick, not even on our carrots. Uh, just basically gonna cut all these down to size, toss them into our mix next to us. I peeled all of my carrots, that's up to you. Uh, most people like to peel those, get that dirt off, but I know some people who like to do their own rustic thing as well. All right, we'll add our carrots to our mix. I've actually made things a little bit easier on us. Already chopped up my potatoes, my uh, corn, and my peas and threw them on in here already for us. I uh, didn't want to take too long chopping everything up on this video because obviously we got to get to the stuff that matters. But next, our celery. This is one that you can just go straight for. Um, once again, around another you know quarter inch thick on your slices on these. Nothing special. Uh, you know, if you like it a little bit more rustic, go bigger. If you like it a little bit more fancy, a little bit more. Uh, neat, then go for a little bit smaller cuts on those. There we go. Nice, easy addition to that. Like I said, peas, carrots, corn, potatoes, and then our celery added in there. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of an extra addition. That's going to be our red onion here. I like to chop this up real small when I'm going. Um, so, you know, if I were you and you are going to be adding in the uh, onion as well, definitely recommend going smaller on this. Um, one thing to keep in mind, red onion, definitely what I would suggest in here, but, uh, you know, a yellow or a, uh, or a, yellow or a uh, white onion would work as well. I just like the flavor that the red gives a little bit more so than the other two in a recipe like this. All right, we got these cut down to size for the most part. Now, once we got these all down to size, that's when we're going to start adding in our seasoning. So remember, this has been pretty much a third cup on everything so far. When we get to our seasonings, obviously, we're not going to be throwing a third cup of everything in there. So we'll uh, give you a little bit better description on those. With our seasonings, I like to shoot for right around a half teaspoon to uh, a quarter teaspoon. Now, this is where it all comes down to your taste buds. When you ask me, I like a little bit more garlic than usual. So I'm going to tell you guys a half teaspoon of everything but I'm gonna go a little bit overboard just cause I'm all about that little extra flavor. So 
just kind of eyeballing a little bit of garlic powder here. You can use normal garlic as well. Uh, cut it yourself, minced garlic, uh, basically any kind of garlic flavor that you want to get in there. Uh, I would definitely recommend down there. Up next, a little bit of black pepper. Again, uh, just about a half teaspoon on this. Um, it, for some reason, whenever it comes to chicken pot pie, I'm always going over on my pepper. It's just one of those flavors that once I hit that pepper taste in my chicken pot pie, I know that it's just about right. All right, and then of course, our salt, as always, right about a half teaspoon of that as well. Um, I think I'm gonna end up having a little bit more pie here than to fill just a single tin, so I'm going a little bit over on those. All righty, so we got our seasonings in here, nice big old pan. What we're gonna do, add in one can, one container of condensed cream of chicken soup. Now, you can use uh, cream of onion, cream of mushroom, cream of spinach, basically any cream of soup that you like. Feel free to use it in this recipe. I use a full can. Um, but, we, you know, when you're doing this, feel free to uh, d d decide how runny you want yours to be. You know, if you want it to be a little bit more runny, add a little bit more of this. Um, if you don't want it to be uh, so runny, you want it to be, you know, thickened up and, and barely any juice in there, then use a little bit less. And then on top of that, after we put in our can of our condensed soup, we're also going to add in just a little bit of chicken broth as well. On this, like we've done with everything else, about a third a cup is all you're going to want to put in here. Not too much. Basically just enough to get it a little bit of moisture in there so that when we uh, are cooking this on the grill, getting it going, it's going to have a little bit of stuff to cook out. It's going to uh, basically not get stuck to the bottom for us at all. It's going to be a real good mix. So as you can see, I'm just diving in here with my gloved hand and uh, it's already mixing together. Fantastic. Ah, beautiful. Now, the final piece of what we got to do here, we're going to go grab our chicken breasts off the grill. Like I said a moment ago, those chicken breasts have been going for about an hour, a little bit over uh, at around 200. I just wanted to get a good smoke flavor on these, a nice little start so that once we put them in there, they've got that chicken smoke, uh, that smoked chicken already inside the pie. And then we add just even more smoke flavor to the crust and to the innards of the pie since we're going to be cooking those again as well. All righty. So we're just going to slice up our chicken real quick. Once again, all up to you on how big you want to go with this. You know, the word I like to use is rustic. If you like it rustic, you like it like it just came from grandma's house, leave those cuts a little bit unfinished. Leave those cuts a little bit more messy. Uh, it's not going to hurt your food. It's not going to make it cook unevenly or anything like that. Uh, it, it just gives it that one more touch of at home uh, compared to, you know, going to the freezer section of Target or wherever else and picking up a chicken pot pie. Um, but for right now, it looks like we've got our seasonings all set to go. We've got our chicken and our vegetables all combined. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's give you a nice closer look at this just so you can see exactly what we're looking like. Oh, nice. We want all of this incorporated when we go in here. We want all the chicken, all the potatoes and carrots all to be mixed in well. See some flakes of seasoning on everything is what you're looking for. Fantastic. Well, we're going to get these into our grill right now. That grill is going to be going right around 220 right now. We're going to throw this in there, let it smoke for, oh, 20-ish minutes at 220. And once we're done with that, we're going to add it to our pies and toss it right back on the grill and we'll leave that going for ee, about another 40 to 45 minutes and at that point we'll be kicking it up to around 400 degrees to make sure that pie crusts up nice and beautiful well we're going to turn the camera off just for a second i'm going to clean things up and get it all ready to come back in a few so that i can show you guys what the next steps are and then get to eating all right y'all so it's been about 20 minutes our innards for our chicken pot pie been cooking for a little while now and we are about to pull those out and get them inside of our pie tin. So let's start on that right now. Got to reach on into our grilla. Oh, beautiful. As you can tell, those insides have all cooked down nice. They're all uh, a little bit softer than they were before, getting right to that texture that you want on the inside of a chicken pot pie. Now. What we got to do, just the same thing you would expect for any other kind of pie out there. You're going to take some of this, scoop it right on into your pie tin, 
cover it with a little bit of your uh, pie covering. Whether you want to do uh, an actual pie crust, you want to do, uh, 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 I've actually seen somebody do it out of croutons before. They took croutons, covered the entire top of the pie in croutons, and they did it that way. Uh, I've seen quite a few different ones. I've even seen a crumble one uh, made out of breadcrumbs, which was pretty good when I had that. Uh, but, you know, it, it, when I make something like this, I always revert back to what my childhood was. And when I was a kid, my mom always did this using just the good old-fashioned normal pie covering. So that's what I'm going to be doing as well. When you're going for one of these, I would probably go for the deep dish pie tins. Not sure if you guys are familiar with those, but basically the exact same thing you would get for any other pie tin. But obviously a little bit deeper than you would expect. Uh, you know, I'm not one of those people that likes to tie anyone down when it comes to a recipe. I always prefer that everybody makes up their own mind, makes up their own flavors, because food is one of those deeply personal things. It's something that, frankly, I think that we should all be a little bit more lenient on how others enjoy their food. You know, you, you talk to somebody and they say, hey, you know, the only way to eat this, the only way to prepare this is the way that I like to do it. And if you don't do it my way, it's wrong. And frankly, I just think that is such an unhealthy way of looking at food. We eat because it makes us happy. So if a way of eating, a way of, uh, you know, uh, cooking makes you happy and other people say that it's wrong, I say get rid of them and do your own thing, man. The best food to you is the best food to you. It doesn't mean that it's going to be great for the next guy over. So, uh, you know, if you ask me my two cents, it's always to each their own. Let everybody enjoy their own preferences. So we got our stuff filled up, and uh, actually we're going to take our nice pie coverings and drape those over. There we go. If they look a little bit uh, messy, a little bit uh, not exactly perfect, that's because I had to hand roll these myself. So, uh, you know, going back to that rustic idea, man, if you ask me, a chicken pot pie is supposed to be a little bit messy. A chicken pot pie is supposed to have stuff that's, you know, a little bit uneven, supposed to have cuts of food that's just, you know, not what you expect. And frankly, I think that gives it all the more character. Well, we've got our grill going up to around 400 right now. It's on the way up. That's our grill back there. We've got our pies covered. I'm going to make a couple slits in the top to get uh, a little bit of airflow going in there so that they don't bubble out and over at any portion. But, uh, you know, we are all set to go. Going to throw it in there at about 420 and leave it for about 45 minutes and just continuously keep checking on it. Uh, what you want to see is that top layer crisp up. Basically, everything in here is cooked already, so you don't need to worry too much about what's internal. Really, you're just looking for that finished crust that you like. Uh, feel free to brush a little bit of butter on the top of that as well, if that's your prerogative. Let's get these in here and then get to uh, eating just about an hour here. All right, we're back, everybody. It looks like our chicken pot pies are just about done, so I'm going to throw on a couple grill gloves here and uh, get that thing open and pull those out. If you've been watching all day today, or all video today, I should say, you know that we have got some all-American chicken pot pies coming your way. Oh, first one came out looking great. Incredibly flaky crust already coming off there. Beautiful. And, of course, you got to go for a second one if you're going to be making one because, I mean, you go for that recipe and, and you know you're going to be wanting leftovers, going to be wanting some extras. So there we go. Oh, beautiful. You know, before I even set this down, I'm going to bring it on over to you guys so you can get a nice close-up look at this as well. All right on. Look at that pie. Nice little air bubbles that we cut in there. And like I said before, don't try to make these perfect. You know, I don't think a chicken pot pie is meant to be perfect. I think it's supposed to remind you of those recipes from back in the day where you just threw something together and if it worked, it worked. If it didn't, you tried something else the next time. So looking like we've got a beautiful flaky crust on these, I'm going to cut into the pretty one, of course. Oh, there we go. That crust is just busting right nice and easy for me. Breaking exactly like I was hoping it would. Still holding a little bit of form, so it is going to be able to be pulled out uh, sort of like a normal piece of pie. But as I'm sure you've all tried a chicken pot pie before, you know that it's got a little bit more runny consistency to it than uh, your normal apple pie or anything like that. Break that crust and, oh, look at that. Beautiful little piece right there. Came out whole. 
Fantastic. And of course, if you get that first scoop, you always got to go back in for a little bit extra innards. At least I always did. My funny thing here, uh, whenever my mom would make this when I was a kid, I guarantee you I ate minimum of a half pie all by myself from age about 11 until age now. Uh, if you make one of these, it's just my secret weakness, man. It's something that it hits that at-home American-style recipe that I know I love and I'm sure a lot of you out there love as well, especially around this time of year. So I'm going to go grab myself a fork and dig on into this. It, let's give you another quick look at this after it's been cut. Fantastic. You can see how those innards solidified up a little bit, but you've still got a nice juice in there, a nice little uh, filling, I like to call it. So this is going to be a fantastic mixture for you. That crust, nice, crispy, flaky, smoky. And then on top of that, you have those creamy innards mixed together with that sauce. Oh, I'm so excited. Time to see if this is as good as I thought it was. Well, for something like that, I think we've decided that we can call it quits for the day. We're all going to be sitting around these for the next couple hours here, just eating, talking about our favorite pastimes, and, and just enjoying the fact that we've got that nice long weekend coming our way in just a few days. Make sure to tune in tomorrow for another of these great all-American-style Independence Day home cooking videos, and have a great day, everybody.